I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the key times in fetal development. So let's get into it. Around four weeks is when baby starts to have a heartbeat. Now we're not going to know about this because likely the woman isn't going to know she's pregnant at this point, but baby has a heartbeat about four weeks. On week eight, all the other organs have been formed by week eight. And this is really important. Um, I'll do another video talking about the stages of fetal development, pre-embryonic, embryonic, fetal. But between weeks two and eight is the embryonic stage, when baby is an embryo. And that's when all the big stuff, like the organs, is happening. And at that time is when they are at highest risk for bad things happening to them. So those things are called teratogens. Those are the bad guys. Those are infections and chemicals and pollutants and bad things that can cause um, harm or even death to the baby. So these first eight weeks are really, really important. Weeks two to eight, that's the embryonic stitch. And by then, all the organs are formed. Between weeks eight and 12, we are able to start hearing the heart tones via Doppler. So they've had a heartbeat since week four, but they've been so teeny tiny that we haven't been able to hear it. And also, mom probably didn't know she was pregnant at that point. Between weeks eight and 12 is usually when most women realize they're pregnant, they've missed their period, they've taken a pregnancy test, and now they've called their doctor to get an appointment. If they realize it early, like some people they know like right away when they're pregnant, doctor will usually have them wait until about eight, 10, 12 weeks before they have their first prenatal appointment and that pregnancy is confirmed via ultrasound. So at this age, this is when we can hear those heart tones. By week 16, we can find the sex of the baby. Now, the sex of the baby was already determined at conception. Uh, sex is determined by sperm, so a little boy sperm and little girl sperm, right? So sex has been known this whole time, but we haven't been able to visualize it until about week 16. So if you get an ultrasound at week 16, commonly people get it between 16 and 20 weeks, that's when they're gonna tell you the gender of your baby. And also at week 16, now it kind of looks like a baby. Before it kind of looks like a little, like a lima bean or like a little blob and you're not quite sure what it looks like. But around week 16, it actually looks like a baby. And then week 20, we're halfway there. Week 20 is literally the most important week because week 20 is when you are viable. We call this the age of viability. So what does viability mean? Viability means that the baby is able to survive outside of the womb. Now that being said, we don't want babies to be born this early. They're only halfway done at 20 weeks. Now, if they were to be born that early, um, because of complications, preterm labor, infection, um, the health of the mother, something like that. If there is a reason the baby needs to be born this early, it has a fighting chance of survival. Being born prior to that, they have a much lower chance of survival. Now I do know that there have been babies in you know, some random cases that were born at 18 weeks and 19 weeks and they have survived, um, but that's very rare that that happens. So 20 weeks is the age of viability. This is the age that baby can survive outside the womb. And if a baby is born early, the more premature, the more likely it is to have problems later on. Um, that doesn't mean a baby can't be born at 20 weeks and grow up to be normal and healthy and have no life complications whatsoever. That's fantastic. But usually there is something that happens. The more premature, the more likely you are to have complications and um, not happy, desirable consequences. So we like to keep the babies in the full 40 if we can. At 24 weeks is when fetal respiratory movements start. And if you've seen my other video on biophysical profile, what did I say in that video? We start checking biophysical profiles, the earliest we would do it is 24 weeks. Why? Because one of those criteria are fetal breathing movements. And they don't really start doing that until about 24 weeks. They're practicing breathing at this point. At 28 weeks, another milestone happens and that is surfactant production. Surfactant, if you remember back from A and P, is what helps keep the alveoli from collapsing in the lungs. And this is my lovely uh, representation of the alveoli. 
not an art teacher, not even going to pretend like I can draw, but it keeps the alveoli from collapsing and that helps with gas exchange in the lungs. Surfactant is really, really important for babies to have. That kind of increases their chance that they're going to be able to be born and to breathe air properly. So surfactant is a good thing. If they are born too early, too prematurely, then they might be getting something called artificial surfactant and usually they're going to be intubated to have that happen. At 32 weeks is when they start practicing sucking. So sucking on their thumb, sucking on their hands, that kind of stuff. This might seem trivial, like, okay, who cares? But it's actually really, really important. This is how they survive, right? When they are born and they need to eat and feed themselves, whether they're breastfeeding, formula feeding, it doesn't matter, they need to suck. It is a survival instinct. It is a very, very important reflex that they have in order to feed themselves. So at 32 weeks is when they start practicing that. And honestly, they don't really get kind of good at it until almost 36 weeks. So. The longer your baby is in there, the better. If baby is born before this time, they might have a hard time sucking. Or if baby is born, you know, just at 32 weeks, when sucking is a very brand new thing to them, they're probably not gonna be very coordinated, they're not gonna be very good at it, and they're gonna have a harder time feeding. And then finally, 40 weeks. This is our goal. We wish we could have every single patient go, 40 weeks, which is considered full term. A full term pregnancy is 40 weeks. And in a perfect world, every mom and every baby would be healthy and we'd all reach to 40 weeks. Because look at all these things this baby has already accomplished in these 40 weeks. One thing I wanted to point out about full term, sometimes people say, well, 37 weeks to 40 weeks is full term. No, 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 that's not right. Um, even in those last three weeks of development, their brain is still getting bigger, their neurological system is still changing, they're increasing their weight and their muscle tone and their strength. All of those things are really, really important. And I know, because I've been pregnant, how hard it is at the end when you're just like, oh my God, I can't wait to have this baby out. Um, I get that and I get our patients are like that too. But it's really, really important that we encourage them to go the full 40 and to not try to do dangerous things to induce themselves early or anything like that. It's very important that you encourage your patients to go the full 40. Going full term is what's going to be the safest and the healthiest option for their baby. And you need to let them know that. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know. And I'll see you on the next one.